Cheers, good morning, welcome to the garden. So I am getting out here to check on the viola seeds before um, I do any watering. Lots of seedlings are coming up now. I'm excited to show you guys because we've got a lot of new, new seedlings growing. But I wanna make sure before I water, and I've been trying to water everything and keep um, everything from drying out, I wanna make sure that I check and see if any of the viola seeds, um, like seed pods are ready. Ah, oh, I'm too Look, late. This one already opened. Oh no, well here's one. See if I feel like that needs a couple days. So we had a bunch of rain over the weekend, so I wasn't able to get out here um, and try to harvest these seed pods. And so one of them oh, already no. opened and spread all of its seeds. It was grow, mama. That's right. Oh, and see, here's another one that already opened. Okay. Well, I guess I'll come out tomorrow. We'll see. Maybe I can find one. Yeah, they all opened. Oh, I'm like a day or two too late. Ah, oh, I'm sort of disappointed. But that's okay. That's part of the process. The rain over the weekend definitely threw off my whole kind of schedule with seed saving, but we've got time. Obviously there's more flowers on the plant, so I think I'll get a chance to come back out here and try to um, to get a few more of those, those seeds. Although some of the ones that I did harvest the other day, I feel like the seeds actually look pretty good. Condensation is on the outside of the bag, um, but I feel like some of these seeds actually look okay. So I'm gonna come back out maybe later in the week and try to harvest a few more. We'll even try to do a germination test or something. But, oh, the girls are out here playing, so you can probably hear them running around. Um, but exciting seedling update this morning while I am out here. Vincino squash has come up would you look at that there should be like one other one in there so we'll see but that looks good i'm still waiting on the cucumbers I'm surprised the cucumbers haven't come up yet and so i'm wondering if it's time to re -sew. it's always hard to know right like how how late it's too late when do you just give up and re -sew? Um, i'm getting close with the cucumber especially seeing that tromboncino come up that's so encouraging um so we'll see yeah, but here's the zinnia, as you can see, coming up. And I think there's a few tiny, tiny, tiny seeds. Even some of the bachelor buttons maybe coming up here. So that is good. But no squash on this side and no cucumbers. Oh. Hmm. Those, those cucumber seedlings. And maybe by the end of this week, it's right at the beginning of the week here today. Um, it's Tuesday. So by the end of the week, Maybe I'll go ahead and re -sew. But I'm just gonna water, water in and hit um, a couple of these plants with some fertilizer this morning too, because uh, it rained all weekend. So again, I didn't even get a chance to fertilize, uh, which wasn't great, but I'm gonna go put a sweatshirt on too. It's cold. It's supposed to be 75 today, which will be good for all the germination, but it's also, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of chilly out here. All right. And the girls are playing because kind of got mayhem this morning. So I'm just going to water and fertilize and then I'll check back in later this week. All right, it is now Wednesday, just one day later, and the first signs of the cucumbers are finally showing. I'd almost given up hope, and it wasn't even as long as I thought it had been. I, I, for some reason, 
I don't know, I had to look back at when I planted them and it only been about, like it's been just over a week. So uh, well within the time frame uh, that they should be sprouting, but they finally are starting to come up. So I'm so excited. I'm still waiting. I think I'm still waiting on the patty pan squash, but here are the cucumbers. This is the little leaf cucumber, just barely coming up. And then no sign of the one I planted in here or the patty pan squash, but I'm sure they'll be coming up soon. And then I planted all those flower seeds in here and I've seen at least a couple more sprouts. There's some basil sprouts that should be coming up. And I think I even saw some chamomile that was coming up over here, but I need to get out here and water again. Cause as you can see, it's just so, so dry here in the Let's middle of the day. Right here again, mama. I know we need to because these seeds, mama. It is so hard to start seeds like this when it's so hot. Um, we did get a little rain over the weekend um, and I think we might be getting a little bit more, but we're getting some nice, good, like summer temperatures, which will help with the germination. So I'm expecting, especially this week, to see a, even more germination, um, but I am gonna get out and do a good bit of watering. I'm also wondering if I should move no, like this dahlia in this container. Little update out here. It is not looking happy at all. I did give it fertilizer yesterday. I don't know. I'm not quite sure what to do about it. Uh, if any of you are dahlia experts and you know what's going on with this. <laughs> the girls are out here with me too. Um, yeah, I don't know if I should should do something more with this. Another exciting happening in the garden is that we're about to get a rose bloom, although I am dealing with a little bit of aphids on this rose plant, so I'm gonna have to do something for it. And it's also just the color is not looking as vibrant as I would expect. So, so I'm not sure exactly what's happening with everything just feeling like washed out like that. Um, I'm gonna keep up with the fertilizer and make sure I'm not like over watering stuff, but I don't think that's happening. I am gonna focus most of my water probably on the areas where there's seeds and the containers and the containers that have um, that have seeds uh, because those are really what I just want to make sure that the top layer of soil does not dry out while the seedlings are coming up. If you plant seeds and then don't water enough, uh, they they won't be able to get out of their seed casings, and you'll end up with obviously without good germination. So trying to stay on top of it. I'm encouraged to see the cucumbers finally coming off up. Like once they start coming up, then I feel like it's such a sigh of relief because then you know, I mean, of course I'm gonna have to keep watering still, but I'm not quite as worried as about making sure that they're just always have enough moisture because at least they've got a root system now to pick up some of the, uh, the moisture from underneath. I'm also still kind of hanging out. So these new raised beds, I'm so excited to have them. I've been loving the look of the garden now. I feel like it's looking so nice and big. As you can and see, we've really got some like garden space here. Nice big area to grow. But I am being patient and I am going slowly. I'm just gonna live with this layout for the week and make sure I like it before I move all the containers, before I fill these with soil and everything. I wanna take some time. Um, it's always, at least for me, I'm always tempted to just like rush through the next move and just like put the soil in and get it going. But a more relaxed pace, I feel like, I don't know, for me, it lends to some better decisions. I'm just, I'm just living with it. I think I like this layout. I haven't felt any desire to change it, um, but I'm just, I'm just letting it sit for the week. And then next week I'll start filling with soil and start planting, which will be really, really exciting. Right, here we go. More watering. And I'm trying to take a little bit more time. I realized that um, although I want to get the top surface of the soil uh, wet, that's where the seeds are. And obviously we want that to be wet, but I also want to make sure that the soil is actually saturated and it's really easy, especially when it's hot like this, to just get water in the top, first layer of the soil and not, um, not really actually get the soil saturated. So I'm going to take some time, just go nice and slow and really let the let the water just soak in, go back over um, areas. I like to like wet it once, let that soil water soak into the soil and like wet it again and just kind of go nice. Yeah, nice and slow and steady, taking my time going back over areas again and again so that the actual soil underneath um, gets, gets wet. Um, and just make sure that the moisture is actually going all the way down through. I just checked and 
well. It's dry, it's gotten wet on top. There's a decent amount of moisture in the soil. It's holding, so that's good. So I'm just gonna keep going over it and making sure that that, that moisture stays. Hey there, welcome to the garden. We are nearing the end of the week and this week is ending in probably one of the best possible ways and that is with the Stillwater Clematis starting to bloom. Clematis are a tricky one for me. I like them, but I, I don't know. I don't like how sometimes the vines kind of get straggly toward the mid end of season and they tend to not, um, I don't know, kind of look as good. But this still water clematis is just so gorgeous. I'll see if I can find a picture from last year in the garden when it bloomed because the blooms when they open fully are just stunning. They are so, so gorgeous. And this one is just starting to open, but it's already so pretty. They are like, oh, they are just the most beautiful sort of purpley blue color with these gorgeous centers. I love them. Again, I'm not a huge clematis person. I love the blooms, but I just, I don't know something about the vines, but still water clematis. It's one that I had to repeat in this garden. I think it's just one of those plants. Like I will always have them in my garden. Um, they are so beautiful. This one is not doing quite as well as as the other. Uh, I may actually put this in a little bit of shade. I'm starting to sort of wonder if the clematis is getting a little bit too much sun. I know they like to have sun, but they also like to have some shade on their roots. So I'm almost wondering if I should move them back here where they're going to get kind of like some shade in, in my sun. last garden. I had them in really part shade. Um, actually, the same area on the same arch trellis that I grew my tomatoes on, interestingly enough. So they did get some sun, but they did get a good portion of shade, especially um, like morning shade. And they were they did beautifully. The flowers were definitely like a little bit bigger than they're showing up right here on this side. And the, the vines were a bit more robust and everything. So um, I'm gonna play with that. I think I might just move them back here in the back of the garden. My next project, um, is going to be kind of rearranging stuff now that we've got the raised beds. I've got to get these filled. Um, so I have some more kind of garden projects out here. And as I'm rearranging, I think I'm going to move. I think I'm going to move these back. I really do love the look of the little, to you know, topiary forms kind of coming up. They add some nice height to the container garden, but, um, Sometimes, you know, you just gotta do what's best for the plants. And that probably, I think, is gonna be moving that container back. Although that is the really nice thing about growing in containers. You know, if I had planted these in ground and I wanted to try out some different lighting, I'd have to dig the whole plant up and, and transplant it and everything. And because we've got the all container garden here, if I need to move something, just move it. Just pop it right back. So I think I'm gonna do that just move back, give it a little shade and see if, see if it does a little bit better, kind of play around with that. There were a couple other blooms that I had to show you. Of course, the Double Dutch Cosmos. I have already showed you all the gorgeous blossoms on that, but a bunch more are opening. This plant is so happy in a container. Let me show you just like, it's loaded, loaded. With I guess I should say loaded with buds, although, so one of the blooms just faded, but there's so many buds on this, and then we've got a bunch of blooms opening. Look how happy this is! It is so happy in this container, which is making me very, very happy. I'm so, like, so excited to see this. It is the most beautiful pink. I wish I'd done it in more um, containers, although it does pick up on the pink petunias really well, uh, so that has been like that's a good that's good and I think I've got another I think this in, in growing in here is another double dutch cosmos we'll see if it gets tall enough to reach out of the containers and then the tromboncino is pushing its first true leaves oh so many good things it's starting to look like a garden and once we get this all set up I think by next week we're gonna have it really 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 looking like a garden but the zinnias if you saw the video where i plant direct sowed um zinnias and beans into the container this container is starting to uh starting to sprout you can see the first couple beans coming up and then there's the first zinnia 
I talked in that video about planting things that have like a similar germination time, similar days to maturity, and uh, you can see how well that works. Cause look at it, everything's coming up at exactly, like exactly the same time. Yesterday there was nothing here and now we're starting to get, starting to get some growth. I don't think I did basil and cosmos in this other container and yeah, there's nothing coming up yet. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of water cause I wanna make sure that it doesn't dry out. But that's basically all the happenings from the garden for this I'm week. I'm going to go ahead and sign off and then do a little bit of work. I'm gonna shoot a video now about kind of putting together the layout of a garden and some of my thoughts on that. But I'm gonna sign off for the week on here. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.